Howdy, I'm Jaybird. Today I will be showing you how to set up and then go over the rules for Lost Ruins of Arnak. It's a 1-4 to four player game for ages 12 and up from CGE and it plays in about 30 minutes per player. As you search the island and discover new dig sites, Lost Ruins of Arnak provides worker placement, deck building, and resource management on your way to the most points. So let's set up and discover how well you can do in the Lost Ruins of Arnak. This game has a double-sided board. For your first game, you'll want to use the Bird Temple side. For future games, you can choose either the Bird Temple or the Snake Temple. To begin setup, you're going to place the board in the middle of the table. Begin by shuffling your artifact cards that have the blue artifact symbol in the upper corner. Set this deck face down in the upper left of the main board. Place the fear cards face up in the middle, and then the item cards with the trial symbol and the shuffled in the upper right hand of the board. Then you will take the moon staff that acts as a round tracker, placing it under the one at the top of the board. Deal one face up artifact to the left and five face up item cards to the right of the staff. Next, we'll randomly place the idle tiles to the dig sites. Each level one site gets one face up idle, and each level two site gets one face up and one face down idle. If you're playing with less than four players, you will need to use some of the blocking tiles. In a three player game, randomly select three tiles. In a two player or solo game, you'll use all five. These blocking tiles will cover up the double boot sp action space at some of the tent sites depending on number of players, preventing players from using that spot during the game. For blocking tiles, temple tiles, and research bonus tiles, it will depend on the number of players that you are playing with for how you set up. Keep in mind, solo is the same as a two-player game. For the temple tiles, you will use the number of tiles equal to the number of players. So, for example, if you have two players, you'll use two tiles per stack. Right below the temple tiles, there is the spot for the lost temple bonus tiles. You will place a number of tiles equal to the number of players face down at this location. Next, distribute the rest of the research bonus tiles along the research track face up in any spot based on the number of players you have in the game. Any location that says 4 should only have a tile if you're playing with 4 players. A 3 plus spot only uses tiles in 3 or 4 player games. So in a lower player count game some of those spots will be empty. Now we want to set up the supply board with all of our resources. In this game we have coins, compasses, arrowheads, gems, and tablets. Next, we'll want to take the stacks of level 1 sites, guardians, and level 2 sites, shuffled and placed face down on the supply board. Assistant tiles should be shuffled with the silver side face up, and then create three stacks of four assistants each. Now that we've set up the board, let's get each player prepared. Each player will then pick a color to play as, taking the corresponding player board, two archaeologists, magnifying glass, notebook, and starting deck. The starting deck will consist of six cards, four basic and two fear. The two types of basic are exploration and funding. Your magnifying glass and notebook should be placed at the bottom of the research track, magnifying glass on top of the notebook, as it will be used first. After determining the first player, take your starting resources. First player gets two coins, second player gets one coin and a compass, third player gets two coins and one compass, fourth player gets one coin and two compasses. The goal of the game is to have the most successful expedition by scoring the most points. So let's get in how to do that now. The game will be played over five rounds. Each round will be broken into several steps, the first of which is to draw cards. So to begin the game, let's shuffle your deck of starting cards and draw five. Now that everyone has drawn their five cards, we are able to begin taking turns starting with the first player. On each of your turns, you can perform one main action and as many free actions as you choose in any order that you choose. 
So let's go over all of the main actions. The main actions you can take are dig at a site, discover a new site, overcome a guardian, buy a card, play a card, research, or pass. To better understand these main actions, I will first go over the anatomy of a card and how that affects the main actions so you can better choose what to do. In the upper left hand corner of the card, you will see a travel value that looks like a buggy, a boat, a boot, or maybe even a plane. These can be used to pay to travel to certain sites such as to go digging or discovering a new location. Cards that you can purchase might have an artifact symbol or an item symbol in the top right hand corner. The bottom right hand corner may have a number that is the point value for the end of the game. And the bottom left hand cost will show you the cost of the card itself. To dig at a site, you will use one of your cards to pay the travel cost that matches where you would like to travel to on the board. You will then take one of your archaeologists and place it on that spot, resolving any effect at that location, such as earning resources, spending an extra card, or possibly exiling a card. There is a hierarchy to the travel symbols. Boots are the lowest, can only go to boot locations. A buggy can go to a buggy or a boot location. Boat, boat, or boot. Now a plane can go anywhere. You can also hire a plane for two coins at any time. Another option is to discover a new site, either a level 1 or level 2 site. There is an additional cost to the travel cost, which is depicted on the board, three compasses for a level 1 or six compasses for a level 2. When you travel here, you first place your archaeologist after paying, and then immediately take the idle token at that location, resolving its effect immediately. Then turn over the top the tile stack, placing it into the location where you just traveled to. If you are at a level one site, use the level one tiles. Level two, use level two. As soon as you turn over the new site, you also resolve the effect shown on the tile itself. After resolving the tile, you will awaken a new guardian. Take the top guardian from the stack, flipping it face up, and place it at the site you discovered. You'll notice the guardian does not affect you immediately. But be careful, if you're there at the end of the round, you will gain an additional fear card to your deck. To defeat or overcome a guardian, all you have to do is pay the cost shown on the guardian tile itself while you're at that dig site. Once you do that, you take the guardian tile to your player area. These guardians can provide a boon during the game, but can only be used once. Once used, guardians are turned face down in your play area. Regardless if used or not, these guardians are worth 5 points at the end of the game. Another main action you can choose to do is buy a card. Along the top of the board, the face-up cards are available to purchase, depending on the cost in the bottom corner of the card. Any item card you buy will be placed face down at the bottom of your current deck. Any artifact card will be pulled to your play area and you can immediately use the effect shown on the card without paying the tablet cost. Once you buy a card, move all cards towards the moon staff and then fill the empty space based on the type of card you bought. To play a card, all you have to do is play it face up into your play area and resolve the card's effect. If you see a lightning bolt symbol, it is considered a free action and does not use up your main action. The artifact cards have a tablet cost on them to then resolve its effect. Reminder, a card in hand can either be spent for its travel value or played for its effect, not both.
for your main action. You can also research to advance either your magnifying glass or notebook up one space on the research track after paying the cost to advance to a connected space. You will then gain whatever bonus is at that location. A bonus tile will be immediately resolved and removed from the game, so only the first person to get to that location gets that bonus. Along the right side of the track also shows you the bonus based if you're using your magnifying glass or notebook. The lower two spots of the track with your notebook allow you to gain assistance. When you gain an assistant, you pick one of the face-up assistant tiles, moving it to your board. You are also racing up the research track as the first ones to the Lost Temple can earn more points. When you reach the Lost Temple, you will look through the face-down bonus tiles and pick one of your choice. The Lost Temple also has temple tiles that you can purchase. The ro lower row has three different costs you can choose from. The middle row uses a combination of the middle and then left or right depending on which stack you choose from. And the top one uses a combination of all three costs. When you feel you can no longer perform any main actions or no longer want to, you can choose to pass your turn. When you pass, you are no longer in the round so you will have to wait for everyone else to pass as well. Typically, you will have played all of your cards during the round, but if you have any left in your hand, you can either discard them or hold on to them for the next round. To prepare for the next round, we'll begin by taking our archaeologists back from the main board to our player boards. If they're at a location that still had a guardian, you'll take a fear card to your play area for each of those sites that had a guardian. All cards in your play area that were either played or discarded will then be taken together, shuffled, and placed under your current deck. Next, we need to advance the round tracker. The card to the left and right of the moon staff will be exiled. Move the moon staff right one space to the next round. Any artifact cards still to the left of the moon staff need to be pulled all the way as close to the staff as possible and deal new cards until every spot has a card. The starting player marker will be passed to the left. Each player will draw up to five cards, and then you are prepared to start the next round. At the end of the fifth round, after gaining fear cards, you no longer have to reset anything, but will instead add up your points. And whoever scored the most points had the most successful expedition and is the winner of the Lost Ruins of Arnak. So thank you for watching. And as always, play games and spread joy.